Hello, we're back. Today we are going to、uh, be inspired by Pierre Augusta Renoir. He was a French impressionist painter who、um, enjoyed painting women, children, and flowers in very soft colors with soft edges. I want to show you some of his、um, floral still lifes, which is what we're focusing on today. So let's take a look at them and notice, notice the、um, the soft edges especially. Soft edges are we we our goal is to have two thirds soft edges and one third hard edges. And in the case of a floral, it's pretty much that way because the base is hard, and that's where the contrast is between the very very lights and the very darks. And then the flowers are kind of have soft edges. The flowers kind of blend in with each other. So then,、um, I want to show you.、Um, let's take a look at it. The, fo the photo that I sent you、um, of the still life that I set up in the studio this week before I paint it today.、Um, notice that <clears throat> in this one, the the base has all the hard edges, the highlights and the shadows.、Um, what else I want to tell you about this is finding finding.、Um, <clears throat> It took me days, well, not really, but almost days, to find my composition. And、um, since I've showed you the one, the one composition that I chose, I want you to see all the other, many more. But I have a few to give you some idea of how、um, there's so many choices in one still life setup. There is the, the different, all the、um, <clears throat> when you look through the viewfinder, find your composition. I was looking at the. The contrast,、um, especially like the lighting situations, some had more light, some had natural light coming through the windows, some had、um, the light from the spotlight,、um, and then just different times of day. Then the, so the lighting is the first thing, and then it was sometimes at different angles. I would look more head on, look, look more down on it,、um, and then different objects like. I put an apple in one, and a couple of pears in another. I、uh, had one with nothing. So just a matter of、um, searching. You're searching and for a composition, and finally you find one that you're really excited about, and that's when you start doing your thumbnail sketch. And、um, so come see the the demonstration because you'll see that I'm really working hard to、um, keep edges soft, especially in the pink flowers. Okay, come see. Welcome to my、uh, vase of flowers demonstration.、Um, I wanted you to see the、uh, thumbnail sketch that took one minute, the value study that took more than five minutes, but that's what you should spend on it—about five minutes. I wanted to show you about the cylinder,、um, how you draw through.、Um, can you see it right there? In other words, if you see the cylinder like this, but the way to get it to be the same all the way around is to relax your hand and go like this, round and round and round and round, and then you go back and you pick out the the, the best one. It's very hard. you can't really draw a cylinder like this, you know. It's too hard. It never comes out even. But if you just go like this, you get a lovely oval. And then I put the line down like I did with the、uh, wine bottle, so that it would be the same on both sides. But it's two cylinders. It's the big one, the main base, and the small one, which is the the top of the base in this case. And then that's what I want you to see for that. Hello, welcome to my studio.、Uh, the first thing I want to do is、uh, tint the canvas pink because this is a basically a pink and green complementary color scheme. So watch what happens. I just put a bunch of alizarin crimson on here, and、um, just a whole bunch like that. Two alizarin crimson, and then、um, wipe it off with the rag. This makes a very nice magenta, pale magenta background to get started. That's enough. It's all going to be covered up, so that's fine. 
Okay. Then I draw it on. This is a um, this is just going to be a colored stamp. So we just have to see if we can get it all on here. I, I'm going to show you the quick little thumbnail sketch that I did. Do we show them that now or no? We'll have a thumbnail sketch and a value study of this setup. But this is the next step where we're going to block it in. Just block it in with the brush. So what I'm trying to do is decide where everything's going to go. Um, this is a little pain. It's only 8 by 10. Um, I want to be sure that I have enough uh, room for all the flowers. I'm deciding for proportions right now. The base, I'm deciding the height of the base in relation to the flowers, and it's about almost two. So I have to be sure that I um, get down far enough so that I have um, two bases up above that. And that's not enough at all. So I have to come down even further, really far down. Or oh, just make the flowers slightly, slightly uh, not quite so high. <laughs> but generally speaking, it would be about two to one. So two to one. Yeah, that's a little better, but not much. That's about one and a half. So I'm going to come down even a little bit more because we don't have a very big canvas, so there won't be a lot of light showing. I'm, it's called restating. I keep um, restating my base shape. And it's really easy to erase with this stuff. So now I've made the base a little smaller, and that will make more sense to have a lot more flowers and a little bit of base. So let's see. So one, one, that's better, it's much better. So that's the first thing, <laughs> get the base the right height. It's kind of a tall base. So I'm going to put the, a little rim around here. Remember I talked about before drawing through to get the ellipses and something like that. So that's the basic shape. And then the water, the water shape right about here. Somewhere near the water shape. That's pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and put the the fruit. See, this is so easy to erase something. So now I'm going to put the, the uh, pear is just sort of overlapping that pear. And the pear is a circle with a little top on it. And go to the base. And the other pair is behind it. There's a lovely shadow on the table. Another shadow there. The tabletop is about here. And all we want to put is, in the landscape it's called a Horizon line and still life that you're horizontal wherever things are sitting. Okay, I'm going to move the water up a little bit. Now that I've drawn this, I'm going to restate the base just a little bit. I want to make the water up a little higher. I like how the water is above. That's so beautiful. Can you see the light changing from outside? Definitely sunset, <laughs> sunset painting. Okay, then um, there's a lovely shape in here. Uh, down here. A deep, big leaf shape there. Not, I don't need too many lines. Enough to get me started. Um, 
sure I have this time and this one. Because these highlights on this base are going to be so nice. We talk about um, Renoir and his soft edges, soft, soft colors, soft edges. So the base will have the hard edges and everything else will be very soft. I did that so I can paint the bottom of it and not stay in put. This is a, a canvas panel of 100% cotton, um, I'm sorry, uh, old time linen. Now the, the big masses, I want to get the big masses of these pink, all the pink carnations in this general area here. And then there's a little white shape here and a little bit of a white shape there. And that's about all you need to get started. Because we're going to really just be painting spots of color next to another. But I want to get the general um, silhouette of the flowers. Probably have the white go off, almost go off the canvas a little. That would be the white one. This would be the white one almost off the canvas. Let's see. With oil painting, you really don't have to draw everything. You just have to decide the general mass of where you're going to be. So we're going to start in, in oil painting, we start with the big masses first. So I'm going to get sure I get the ones I care about. All right. So there's a little, nice little dark line right here. Because you always want to find a horizontal structure line and a vertical structure line. And then we can just play all you want. Can't get loud enough. All right, and then let's um, mix up some color. Go to it. I'm not sure what it's a little bit more light in here. I want to really look at the silhouette of this. That one, I think we need to draw it like this. Draw the silhouette. Um, and then there's uh, some lines that look like this. And some of those little white things, buds, beautiful buds. So this is the main pink shape here. There's another one up here. And then the rest of them kind of come out of these two. So that's, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a big mass of pink here and a mass of pink here. That's enough to start. Okay. So let's maybe um, <clears throat> put in some green shape. And it's pretty dark. I want, we want it lighter there. <clears throat> so maybe up in here, it's a little bit dark. So I'm looking for some dark shape so I can kind of get started here. Um, let's see. That's yeah, pretty dark. Wow, I love that light on this. What are we doing here? Uh -uh. That's, about, that's about it. <clears throat> that's a good start. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some pink flowers in, okay? The pink flowers are literally, we can paint them individually, but, um, but we're really thinking of the big mass of them is that one. Some of them are kind of in shadow already. It's really nice. Um, a little lighter. Especially over here, they're really light. They're pink, but they're light. Remember, we're just painting a big mass of pink. Mm 
put really, they were graffiti and then we paint what's behind them. But this is a stark limit here for sure. One over here. Bunch of them in here. So then we had two masses of pink, this one, this big one here. And then there's another little section here. We'll come back and put the details in later. But the idea is if you paint um, the big masses and you don't do any details yet, um, it will all come out in the end. And we'll get a little bit lighter green in here. Beautiful green thing in here. Um, To, uh, this is a little heavier right there. And then the really white one could almost lift them off. That might be good. That's a good idea. I'm going to lift off all kinds of ways to do this. I'm going to lift off the white flower here because underneath this is white, the white of the canvas. Maybe even a little bit of highlight here. Maybe. maybe even down here. See the highlight right there. Hmm. I think if we put the background on, it would be easier for us. Let's do that so we can see it. It's a beautiful color right here. I see how the sun setting. So we only had a few minutes to get all that beautiful light. Beat the clock. Okay. I want to, um, if I talk about painting the whole picture at once, I I want to put in the highlights on the on the base so I don't lose them. There's a wonderful little uh, light in the water there. I don't want to lose that. The sun's changing. There's a line here, a beautiful line. Let me put this white flower in too. What's the main shape of them? I 
actually just light water. And then the uh, little bit of, so just a bit of light brush and shading. That's really cool. Oh, the light is shining in on his feet. So let's put in the um, shadow while we still can. <laughs> You're expecting spider bat paintings and lies as the sun goes down. Ooh. I'm going to put this color in here. You see the dark, don't you? It's fun for you guys to see what I see. This wonderful shape right there. So all I'm doing is um, painting. This is darker. Um, I really want to get this dark back here. Let me get it to here. See how the, um, the flowers are light against dark? Let me gotta get that in there. Hmm. This is interesting. The background is a whole lot darker than that shadow right there on the table. And this is where the, um, the value study comes in. There we go. So this probably, the shadow probably needs to be lighter because the background seems to be the right value. You can't really see the flowers until you paint the dark behind them. So if we're talking about the big masses, the pink is one big mass. In the background, the dark of the background is definitely another one. So let's see, maybe that right there. Remember, this is not a finished painting for the museum. This is a color study. That means you put something down really fast to get the big masses. See how fast you can get the main, main shape. You remove it. You can always go back and paint another one later. can't really do a lot of detail when you're painting. This is more like a landscape than a still life because I chose to give it a try with the natural light. Um, and that is changing as we speak, as you saw that. So where else can I put this? Maybe in here, the two places. Um, about it. You see how the, the dark comes in in a few places. And then right there, the silhouette of them. They say to look at a, a landscape in terms of a silhouette. Let me get you back and look at it. Wow, I got for five minutes. <laughs> um, so I'm happy with the background, um, the shape of the background. A, little, a few little negative spaces peeking out. Uh, let's see a little bit more pink there. Put some more pink in this little hole here. And then a few, um, we'll paint like an impressionist. <laughs> I'll just put a few things in. Let's see. Oh, the white, that's about it. Um, okay, I'll do the. Um, few details on the well, first I have to get the background coming through here. You can see that. 
Um, so the color of the background is uh, peeping through here. But I still want to be able to see the base. So, although right now you can see it sort of disappeared. But it was brighter at one time. So this is the, the leaves showing through, the background showing through, the background showing through right here. So all that is, is just a little note of color, a, a shape, a shape of color right there. So the background is coming into the base. And how do I show? Hmm, I'll, have to look, I'll have to look later. But it's changed. I think there might have been a little light there or something. Maybe I'll make it slightly lighter. Yeah, there we go. And then over here is definitely lighter, so I'll add that. Right here, I'm going to have to make this light. Always ask yourself, is it light against dark or dark against light? In this case, it is light against dark. So the whole thing is lighter. Let's put that in. Lighter than the background. Darker than the cloth. Like that. There we go. This is darker. And some of the what red lines showing that might be okay. I want to put a few more um, green things in here. Okay, the green things will be like, um, where is it? Here's one. Maybe here, ah, here, there. A little, I feel like an impressionist. <laughs> this impressionist had all these little spots of color. And they, they all painted from life. So you can see how. You're just struggling to get what you see, and you end up with little brush strokes. It's so much more fun than just drawing and filling it in. Really, but that's, that's part of it. And right now, in isolation, we're not doing many things like going on roller coaster rides or anything. So, this is you jumping off a cliff. Hmm, I like that. So I need to do a little bit more to this water here, because the water is so important. I say that little oval shape there, but underneath it is about the same color. So let's put that in. And darker than beneath it though. So that's why I always say the value study, first the thumbnail sketch is important because it tells you what you are excited about. You want to accomplish what you intended, but also just a lot of things going on in here. And it comes, you can see it through the glass and up into here, down into here. That little slice of white there. Right there. And you want to put the paint on as thick as you can and leave it alone. Maybe this is a nice thing on. Some white peeking right in here. Then we have this lovely line here. here. I'm definitely here, but maybe I have too much there. Maybe not. A little bit of light in here. back and pull out our shape of this bottom here. Hmm. So 
So you see what I mean by painting the whole picture at once. Um, not putting in the detail yet. Trusting that when we're all done, um, the details will emerge. And the lovely thing here was it is the color of the skin down there. I just love that skin. Let's put that in. It's got some elements of it on it. What about here is a nice little orange skin. Hmm. Try again. I want an orange skin. Perhaps because it's lighter. It's lighter than what's next to it. So let's go back and pull it out. By darkening what's next to it, we'll be able to see the skin. And I want to put a few um, green lines in here without losing my background. Blue accent. Hmm. I think we need some dark accents. We keep, keep going back and forth between light and dark, but now we need some dark. It's quite dark in here. And uh, here's a line. The sharks are here. Sharks are here. Going back and being a little more careful about the shape that I want. This is more of a gray. This is a cloth looking fruit. This is more green. I feel like my teeth. I just love to paint flowers and vases. What we're talking about where Lynn Wall today and her soft edges. And I'm just finding some lights and darks in here. A little darker, a little more dark here. Dark here. Dark here. There's definitely light here. Maybe now that it's gotten darker, we should darken this a little bit. So yeah, see that little contrast between, well actually I probably need to lighten my light a little bit too. I darken the dark. And if I'm not sure what the boundary is, I just squint my eye, close one eye. And look for accent. So that's this way. <clears throat> I want to um, enough for now. Oh, I want to lighten it. <clears throat> right in here. So I'm squinting and I'm noticing that this is light. Right here, the, the glass is light against the dark. Um, 
Excuse me, Pat. When I darken it down here, I need to darken it up here too. Do that uh, pear, and then we'll just see what else we need. We'll go quick. Um, but that pear is really pretty. It's the same thing. We're putting in the big masses. Showing the thorn with the light and dark sides. That's just a little there's a circle on the bottom of the pear and then a little top. But, um, I don't have a lot of color in here, but this is a nice place to put some Nice bright red because it's brightest as it comes out of shadow. Let me put a little of that over here. We'll echo a little bit of the red and the pear in the back. Maybe we should put this someplace. <coughs> we're always looking for some place to put echo of the colors that we're using. So this is another way of painting the whole picture at once. I'm using the red that I'm doing that with to put some of the details in the, just a few little details. I can't possibly draw all of the little things. You wouldn't want to, but you get a suggestion of them. Yeah. I mean, you don't really see red, but if you look, you might. I, I see it. Where else can you put it? Um, there's always a few accents somewhere. A red accent here might be nice. And I said I like the red in there. I might put a little red on the handle, on the stem, I mean. That's about it. A little brighter here, maybe. Okay. A little dark here. I'll just start with what I put in. I'm going to put in a, a thing that's little. I love how the um, carnations have these little things, little buds, bulbs, or whatever they're called, right there. And then they come down like this. I just need a few of those. You need a few little buds. It can be nothing more than a stroke. A lot of those. Hmm, now that I'm looking, I see more and more of them. Almost done. And in these places that are kind of pink, we might just fill in a little bit more green. But it's okay to have um, some pink peeking up. Like that. Maybe there's more green in here. Yeah, see all the little green? Um, between, maybe that's about right. But even this becomes a, a what do you call it, a, a mass. The dark mass behind the flowers. A little bit more green there. Okay, I'm going to um, finish the the pear. Yeah, the apple in the back is sort of a yellow green, more than more yellow, I guess, but some green. Let me start with that one. Start with the green. We're almost done. Just get the big shapes in, and then I'm gonna put the put more yellow over here. Mm 
Maybe you need to echo some yellow up here too. This is called echoing. Whenever you have something on the brush, find another place to stick it. If you're looking for it, you can find it. You can give a yellow in uh, some of the cards that have a lot of yellow in them. You can have a little yellow in this little accent in here, maybe in the leaves. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, I'm going to finish up here. The color of the shadow of the tail is pretty warm, isn't it? It's actually clear. Because I'm talking a lot about value, but right now I'm, I'm asking myself about warm and cool. Um, back to putting bright red next to that room. And then I need to um, darken, get some neutral colors going in here. So I think in blue. Light color for the shadow on the table. Under here. Hmm. Okay. That looks about it. Hmm. I choose you would be sweet. So they call don't chase the light. I mean, if I liked it. Half an hour ago, I think I better just leave it because it's changed. So you finish that and we'll be done. This is just working with the warm and cool color and so on. And then back here to be a little brighter on top. Okay. Here is a little lighter. Tone dark. You can soften the edge with a stroke of paint. Yeah, just like that. And a couple of accents in the end. The end is going to get to see, I see. It doesn't look done, but it's a, it's a little accent there. A little accent on the stem. Um, under here, there's a nice shadow. They're called warm accents. And it's all with this. Okay. 
なんてことがいらんっていうのも、一生懸命聞けないの。私努力が。はい。うん、あの、これもかわいい。うん。You just jump in and yes. play around because it did not look like anything was going to happen. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, keep, you keep the colors mixed right on your palette, and you're using one brush in each color. You're not using the same brush. At the beginning, to save time, made a little puddle of green, put a green stick in there, a green brush, um, maybe lavender, but that was about it. Lavender, yeah. But after that, after that, I'm just wiping off the same brush over and over again. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then I, as I saw it, you were putting shapes. You see shapes of color as you see them, and you either use the side of your brush or the whole flat of your brush, right? It really wasn't detail. You, you want to um, load the brush up as much as possible and um, use the brush in different ways, not just the same old stroke. Brush. Yes. Okay. But also, also, I'm thinking about the form as I'm doing it. Like I'm trying to feel, feel, feel it almost, you know what I mean? I'm feeling the way the yes. petal turns. I'm feeling the way the light, something like that. But it's not precise. It's not a precise. Absolutely it's not. A, it's a, just a suggestion. Okay. Yeah, oh, that was my whole goal. I mean, yeah, well, it was. But, but we all, we all, that's our, always our goal. We say we want to be loose, but we really want to be tight. Perfect. Right. And, and then we're tight, and then we try to be loose. But, um, but I think that's interesting. The impressionist book I held up, the impressionists were loose, right? Very, yes. For very. One reason. One reason is they were painting from life. So yeah. they were kind of doing that. They were just enjoying the process, enjoying looking to light, shapes. So the first thing I tried to show was that in the beginning, you put a few lines to kind of indicate where you're going to go. And then you just put in the big masses, maybe three, three big masses. For me, it was the, the shapes of the flowers, just the, the flat silhouettes of them. Not the form of them, just the shape of them, like you said. You just see the big shapes, three big shapes. So I had a pink shape, a purple shape in the background, a white shape on the cloth. That would be the three basic shapes. But um, you notice how I'm painting the whole picture at once. That's what it's called. I call it dancing around. <laughs> and then think about getting the big masses first, which I did. I put the pink, pink mass in, and then I just felt like an impressionist. I was just dropping in little spots of color here and there, not putting anything in that I didn't see. Um, then but the, the, the process is that if you surrender to this idea of painting the whole picture at once, that means you don't do any details. You, you make yourself hold back, hold back. And notice I'm bouncing color around. If I have, I always believe this, was, I heard about this early on. If you have something on your brush, Put it someplace else before you put it down, especially in oil, but even in watercolor. So I was like, if I have yellow, maybe I should put it someplace else. It's called echoing. You keep echoing it around. Nice. And then at the end, if you surrender to this process, um, it does all kind of fall into place at the end. But mm -hmm. it doesn't look like anything's happening for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> because because in my theory, you know, is a good composition will paint itself. So that's why, because I was kidding about how we do a thumbnail sketch every time. But we usually, and I said, well, usually we don't because we don't have time. 
we, we just want to get on with the painting, get on with it. But then I thought, well, now we have time. <laughs> we can paint a, we can do a little uh, value study for five minutes. Yep. yep. But it's pretty classic. I mean, the idea of a, of a thumbnail sketch and a value study is classical training. And then, but the reason you can see it's so much easier for you when you start to paint, because you've been painting in your mind. First of all, you've been painting the, the composition kind of, you're beginning to see something. And I said at one of the demonstrations that if, when you look through the viewfinder that I, I have you do, when you have a real setup, you have to have one, or, or even your camera. I mean, the phone, the phone is a viewfinder in a way. So <laughs> then you find something that, you, that, something that you are excited about. And then once you have that in your mind, the, the vision that you have is almost a vision. And then, then you sort of are working toward that all the time. Like, it's easier for you. I think it puts it on, on your brain and helps it come out better. I think if you spend time on the drawing, which doesn't, and Duncan also noticed, he said, well, you're not adhering to the drawing. But all this time doing the drawing, and then you're not staying in the line. I said, well, it, it's not supposed to ever be that you draw something and then fill in, fill it in. So the lines are just, a, it, it's my way of trying to resolve all the problems, like, where these things are going to go, and so I, I spend time drawing. It's fun to draw. Let's put it this way: you feel like a beginner. Yes. <laughs> no, matter, no matter where you are yeah. on this, on this journey, you feel every time you sit down at that blank piece of paper, it's terrifying. Yeah. I feel the same way. I never know. I I keep pressing on, but I don't feel very confident that it's going to come out. Yeah. Hope. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh. so, so I guess I guess the, the the message is it's the process, not the product. Keep right. telling yourself. Yep. <laughs> right. Keep right. reminding us. Yeah. Because we're so product oriented, and it just spoils everything. Spoils everything. <laughs> not if you want to have a show, you just want to do this for fun. So enjoy it. Okay. So I'm looking. At, I'm looking there, and somebody else is talking. <laughs> <laughs> I be lips. Remember? I mean, this is. Right. So I have my. I have my interpreter here. If it's doing it, what should I say, Duncan? Goodbye. Cause say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have to tell you. I have to tell you. This, this, doesn't this look like a George Burns and Gracie Allen routine? <laughs> Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> and Duncan Channel.